Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service today. And welcome to those who are watching on live stream, Facebook, and the website. Now, unfortunately, Tracy is not well, and she was to give the talk to you today. So I'm sorry, but you've got me. <laughs> Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> so, before we begin the service, let's just take a few minutes to let go of the, all the trouble of getting here and the outside world. And let us just attune ourselves to the temple angel Can you feel her? She is absolutely wrapping her arms, her wings around you and enfolding you in light and healing. And then you may like to attune to the angel of the star, the six-pointed star. <coughs> the angel of light. And allow the light from the angels to just fill your whole being. Allow the light to fill your thoughts. And your emotions. so that you are totally centered on the light. And feel the peace that the angels bring as they draw close to you and enfold you in their love. In this state of peace and love, it is so easy now to open our minds and our hearts to the words of wisdom from White Eagle. And today, Steve has volunteered to do the reading for me. morning. It wasn't actually volunteering. <laughs> That's it, yeah. But it's a beautiful reading today and it's from Stella Polaris from April, May 72. And it's about the ancient ones and the Christ. We would speak to you on the subject of the ancient ones. And as we start our talk, we hope that you will be conscious 
of the presence of the beloved Master Jesus, who he is himself one of these great and ancient ones of whom we speak. The Master Jesus is a simple and beautiful personality whom you have learned to love and to whom most of you yearn to come closer by understanding his life and teaching more deeply. You want to know all you possibly can about the personalities of Jesus. We are aware of his attunement with you and with ourselves. He stands now in all his heavenly glory as he once stood before his disciples at the transfiguration. Christians regard Jesus not only as a very wonderful man, but also as the son of God, which of course he is in one sense. But there was one greater who shone through the personality of Jesus. We refer of course to the Son, Christ, the Golden One. Think of the Golden One as being the Son, of being himself, the spiritual Golden Son, the essence, the life, the creator in the Son who has taken form as man. This is difficult for earthly man to comprehend. But the form of a man can be the most beautiful of all of God's creations. We would speak now not of Christ, the gold one, but of Jesus, who came to this earth from afar with a special mission to fulfill. Now from time to time, visitors come from other planets in your solar system with a message for the earth. Jesus was such a one who was from the planet Venus. The messengers to earth who have been called saviors have always come from afar. So when we refer to the ancient ones, we refer to these great souls The ancient ones, when they come, when they contact the earth, and more rarely the people of earth, for they make this contact on a plane above the physical, make no claims. You have no conception of the age of your earth or the age of man. Scientists are constantly extending the supposed age as they proceed with their investigations, but they have not yet reached the truth. In the remotest parts, past, sorry, the great ones were teaching the people about God's truth, revealing to them by degrees the secrets of the earth and heaven. we return to the ancient ones. Through the ages, teachers have come to earth with a new religion as they, edit, sorry, as it is called. In reality, there are no new religions, but only new teachers who come to restate or reveal spiritual truth. they may not even be recognized as such. To men, they appear to be ordinary men and women. All down the ages, these ancient ones have appeared to mankind in a form which man could accept, 
speaking a language the people could understand. But we want to make it very clear that appearances can be deceptive. The ancient ones can come to you in a form like your own, but they are not what they seem. They are great beyond all measure, and yet so simple. The form in which they come appears so ordinary that you cannot believe that they are souls of great antiquity and boundless wisdom. These ancient ones were known by the Indians of America as plumed serpents, so-called because they appeared to have a crown of light around their heads born of their spiritual greatness. It looked like a crown of soft feathers, but it was the divine fire, the illumination around the dome or the temple, the higher centers, which caused them to be, appear to be wearing crowns of white luminous feathers. These plumed serpents, or feathered serpents, as they were known, some, sometimes known, came to the priests in their temple and imparted God's truth to them, revealing to them the will of the Almighty Spirit. The names of these ancient ones, differing from age to age, can be traced on the ancient stones and records of the past. They came as saviors, just as Jesus did. It was said in the ancient days that they came from the sun, that they were sun gods. Christ is truly the third aspect of the deity, the only begotten of the Father, Mother, God. But this Christ, this golden spirit of the sun, has had a number of manifestations apart from the one through Jesus. Christ is everywhere, infinite, eternal, always has been, always will be. Christ has come again and again, and particularly in ages past through the sun gods, the ancient ones, always with the same message, and always the messenger appeared miraculously. We ourselves, when we lived on earth, were acquainted with the sun god, and it's happened since. The sun gods were crucified, but always they rose again, teaching the people about the mysteries of birth, life, crucifixion, and resurrection. None today knows about them, but markings re which record their coming remain on many ancient stones whose message can only be read and understood by initiates. For these things are for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. A world composed of the finer ethers exists just within your own solid world, which is not the spirit life as you understand it, and to which you can go when your body dies. Within this finer world, these ancient solar brethren still live and worship in their sun temples and sun cities. Why? Because they still have work to do with mankind. Unknown to man, this wonderful life is being lived and the spiritual forces generated by these ancient ones are penetrating our earthly life. The message of all the ancient ones throughout time is the same. Ladies and gentlemen, 
love one another. Love thy neighbour. Love God, the eternal spirit. And through that love, learn to know thyself, to know God and the mysteries of his universe. Thank you, Steve. And now, will you join with me in our earth healing prayer? And we remember the great need of our world. And we seek to still our mind so that we come into a place of peace and stillness and in that peace we draw closer to the light so let us open our hearts to the light to the power the love the wisdom of the light. <clears throat> By this light and love in our hearts, we call to the great angels of light, the angels of healing, Being still, we feel their presence and their power. And now with all the will of our minds and with all the love of our deepest heart, we send forth the light. We send it forth as a great star of light, a blazing star, a star of light. Lifting all hearts into the eternal heart of God. By all the power of the light within our hearts, we send forth the light to the world. We hold our beautiful planet in the healing light of the Christ star. We hold within this healing ray the soil the waters of the earth. the air, and all nature, especially the animal kingdom. And in particular today, we hold so strongly within the light all animals in captivity and especially the bears in Vietnam used for bile farming.
all animals whose habitat fringes farming areas. In the light, we hold the climate of the earth herself. <clears throat> Macquarie Harbour in Tasmania and the Morgian Skates, it's a type of stingray Macquarie Harbour and the Morgian Skates. We hold in the heart of the star the soul of Australia, the soul of the people of Australia. May the light shine through the hearts and minds of the people of Australia to bring healing to humanity and reverence for all life. We hold in the heart of the star the soul of New Zealand, the soul of the people of New Zealand. And let us hold within this great healing star anyone known to us personally who is in need of help or healing. Silently, we name them now. And we see them radiant in the healing light of the star. And particularly today, we hold in the light the soul of Kirsten Blake, Ava and Trudy Cook, Jess Tate Jamison, Wendy Davis, Cody Mann, Bridget Cuff, Morgan Peer and her daughters Scarlett and Isla, Carol Pearson, Carol. We see you walking into the light and welcomed by your family and friends to start your new life in the heavenly temple. And we hold your husband, Frank, Frank Pearson, Narell Gillett, Narell, we see you walking into the light, welcomed to your new life by your family and friends. And we hold your family here on earth, particularly Roslyn, Stephen, Jonathan, and Emma. And we see all these dear souls 
radiant in the light of the star. Amen. And will you please join me now in saying <clears throat> the Lodge Invocation, the words you will find on the pieces of paper on your, on your chair. <laughs> May the light shining within my heart stand guard over my thoughts and guide my speech and actions into ways of service. May the light of the star shine from my heart to heal the sick in mind and body, to comfort the bereaved, to sustain the weary. May the light illumine my understanding and the understanding of all people, bringing true vision and an awareness of the eternal life and of the light within all. Amen. I'm sorry today, it's just a short talk. That's why um, Steve's reading was a little bit longer than normal. So on February the 14th of this year, it was Valentine's Day, wasn't it? Oh, did some of you forget? <laughs> I hope you shared the love with those around you. But also it was Ash Wednesday which in the Orthodox religion is the start of Lent. <clears throat> and the ashes come from the burnt fronds of, from Palm Sunday the year before, and they're crushed up and made into a paste and placed on people's brow in the form of a cross. And it was to remind humanity of their mortality then. But I believe it was to remind them of their deep connection to the source of all life. Now, there's a number of places in the Bible that refer to ashes. And I think it's mentioned three times in Genesis and also in Ecclesiastics. And you will probably remember hearing the words during a funeral, we commit his or her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And another quote, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. So to me that means we come from God and we return to God. So it had a, quite a significant meaning, an inner meaning, when they put the cross on your third eye. Now again, Ash Wednesday is the start of Lent. And we know in the Christian church people are asked to abstain or give up certain things, and they're encouraged to control their physical appetites. But it's more than that. It's far more on, on an inner, deeper level. It really is a time of discipline, disciplining our emotions and our thoughts. 
and it's a time to strengthen our spirit. White Eagle said, my brother, my sister, this discipline, this sacrifice, this overcoming of desire, and the opening of the heart chakra in sweet, gentle love to life is really the only way. Do not concern yourself with what other people do. Perhaps with some, you find it very difficult to be in harmony. The way to overcome such obstacles is really to set your mind and your thoughts upon the Lord God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. They shall hold the image of the Lord God ever before them. When once the soul absorbs that spirit, that radiation from the cosmos, it becomes so imbued with love that the details of everyday life automatically fit in. For instance, there comes a time when the aspirant forgoes the desires for coarse living, for the coarser forms of entertainment. He went on to say that in the past, humanity was taught to fight evil. White Eagle is suggesting that a better way is not to fight evil, but to lose interest in the coarser forms of life. Lent, then, was the way the early church taught the need for self-discipline, self-control of emotions, the mind, and strengthening of the spirit. And here's an interesting point. Lent lasts for 40 days. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years looking for the promised land. And a child lies in the womb for 40 weeks. We could then presume that the number 40 stands for a period of waiting, of development, while the soul wanders in the wilderness, undergoing tests and trials on all planes of life. But Lent should not be confined to the 40 days prior to Easter. It should be every part of our life, every day, every minute, of our life. It should be our training and our discipline. And it's interesting that the term Lent means to lengthen. So what we're being asked to do is lengthening our ability to dis discipline our lives, to control our thoughts and our emotions. We need to learn to be calm and tranquil in our mind, in our emotions, in our heart. And so our soul can reflect the higher levels of life. So let's look at the crucifixion. It's a very churchy theme today, isn't it? Lent and, and crucifixion and then... But they all have inner meanings. And the story of the crucifixion is demonstrating, I believe, Jesus' great ability to love and to forgive. Throughout all his teachings, Jesus spoke of love. He demonstrated love through his words, through his actions. And when he was being crucified, rather than condemning those who betrayed him, those who were crucifying him, what did he say? 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them. That is unconditional love and understanding of the laws of God, which is love, forgiveness. I've spoken before about forgiveness, and I don't know if you remember, but in one of the dictionaries I looked up, it said, and this nearly blew my socks off, forgive, replacing me. Forgive, replacing me. So if we take the little me out of the equation, if we take our little hurts and our feelings out, then the person making a comment or a judgment or doing an act um, has absolutely no power over us. It has no way of affecting us if we take the little me out of the equation. So, did Jesus take the me out of the crucifixion? He certainly did, didn't he? And replace the me with Father, God, with love. If only we could do that in our lives, wouldn't life be so much simpler? Love, love, love. And through all Jesus' life, he showed us the way. White Eagle said, Christ, through Jesus the initiate, brought this message to the world. Love is the Saviour. In earthly language, it has been said, Jesus Christ is the Saviour. Yes, but it is the divine love and intelligence behind the Christ consciousness, which is the saviour of the world. But also, each man and woman has to learn to be his own, her own saviour, by developing a consciousness of Christ in their everyday life. Now, I'd just like to clarify what White Eagle meant about Christ and Jesus. Jesus, the man, as Steve was reading, was a great initiate, prepared through many, many lifetimes. And in one of the readings, White Eagle has said that Jesus was before this earth began. And he was trained through many, many lifetimes to become the channel through which the Christ, the third aspect of God, the love aspect, could manifest. So we have God as being made up of power, wisdom, and love. So he was the love aspect, the third aspect. And that love shone through Jesus. It shone through many, many world teachers. But Jesus seemed to personify that feeling of love. In the book, Jesus, Teacher and Healer, White Eagle said, Jesus had a particular mission to bring to this earth. At the time of the Christ initiation or crucifixion of the man Jesus, there was a flooding of the whole earth with light. It was more than just a passing out of the physical body and the great demonstration that man's spirit is triumphant over death. Through Jesus' crucifixion, there came a baptism of the whole earth, the soul of the world, with the Christ light. 
Can you imagine the power, the light that flooded the earth? So he went on to say, this is why Easter is not a sorrowful time. The joy which you are able to feel at Easter is due to the fact that through this festival you are able to touch and to respond to the outpouring of love from the great heart, Christ, or the third aspect of God. How many times in the Bible do we hear love one another? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Before his crucifixion, the disciples asked him what they could do to enter into the kingdom of heaven. His answer was very simple. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. If we could do this, if we could love God with all our heart, then we would indeed love our neighbor and all God's creatures on earth and the earth itself. If we love God, then all cruelty, whether to another human being or to an animal or to the earth, would be replaced with love. What a glorious future awaits us when we can truly love. So, dear ones, shall we go into meditation? So let us put aside now all the thoughts of the talk. and focus on our breathing. And if a thought pops in your head, breathe it out and let it float away. And you realize that the breathing is becoming slower and deeper. And we feel that all tension is just slipping from our body. We just relax and allow the tension to ease in the shoulders, in the neck, breathing in and allow the facial muscles to relax. Particularly feel your brow relax.
and your jawline is lovely and relaxed. And in this relaxed state, we are now able to open our heart and our mind to the influence of the heavenly world. And in this heavenly state, we are bathed in golden light, the golden light of the spiritual sun. Breathe in this light, this heavenly light, filling all your bodies, the physical, the emotional, the mental bodies, just filling them with light. Letting go of the emotions, all the hurts of the past. Just let them go. And as the emotions are let go, love, peace fills that space. Breathing the light into our thoughts, our mental body, and letting go all outworn thought patterns. And as we let go, light and love fill the space.
And we feel our whole being aglow with light. And into this radiant light, if you choose, you may like to bring a situation, a person that you need to let go. Remember taking the me out of anything that's unpleasant. So from your higher self, just holding the situation, the people, in that radiant light, And as you bathe these people, situations in the light, your heart grows and expands. And to help you remember this wonderful feeling of a radiant heart, the angels of light place on your heart chakra a symbol, a symbol that will be different for each one. But it is a memory And if you find yourself in a particular situation, if you touch your heart, that memory will be reignited and you will be that center of radiant love.
now with that symbol within your heart, we very gently begin to breathe our way back, taking deeper breaths, bringing that light and love right down into your physical body, sitting in the temple. Feel that love filling your feet, your legs, your lower body, your upper body, and your head. And you are a radiant being of light. As you bring your awareness back into your physical body, And let us close this service now in prayer. Divine Spirit, we are so grateful for all that is beautiful and progressive and lovely in our life. May we never forget your love nor our brother, sister's need for your love. We pray to become more worthy channels through which your light may shine in the darkest places of life. Amen.